talk about one of the first symptoms that can occur if you're low in salt in your body, which this is actually very, very common. It's weakness, okay? Overall feeling of weakness, you're kind of tired. Let's talk about why. First of all, the, the root word salad is a Latin word for salted greens, okay? Because the Romans used to dip their lettuce in salt, which is interesting. The word salary or sal, S-A-L, is a Latin word for salt. And the Romans sometimes used to get paid in salt instead of money, which is another interesting point. You should never consume refined salt. Always a sea salt that's unpolluted. Himalayan salt is great. There's many other salts that are just as good because the refined salt is just sodium chloride and you're not getting all the other minerals in the right balance that you need. Plus they add aluminum which is not good. Salt is also needed to make hydrochloric acid in your body to help digest protein, to help absorb minerals, to help uh, kill pathogens. And many people are low in HCL, and then they start getting acid reflux, indigestion, bloating, uh, especially as you get older. An average person, as a very minimum, needs one teaspoon of sea salt every single day. But in many cases, they need more, especially if they exercise, or do the ketogenic diet. Now, I think the worst scenario a person can be in is if they're on a low salt diet and they're drinking lots of water, so they're diluting that little bit of salt that they have, and then they get on a diuretic, which will then cause the water to come out, but also the sodium too, making them very deficient in sodium. And if they're on a high carb diet with all those other factors, What's going to happen is they're going to retain the fluid and the sodium, but in the wrong places. So they're going to be in a a real bad situation. So you're generally just going to have this feeling of weakness and tiredness. And then when you consume some salt, you're going to feel a lot better right away. So if you're in doubt or confused about this, just add a little more salt to the diet and see if your energy doesn't just perk up. When I take my electrolyte powder, which has a lot of sodium, I always add more salt to it, especially if you're going on keto and you're no longer consuming all these refined carbs with all this extra sodium. But if someone's just starting keto and they're, they've been on a high sodium refined diet, then they don't need to do that because they already have too much sodium from things like the monosodium glutamate and the extra sodium that they put in a lot of junk foods. But here's why you get energy from sodium, okay? Number one, sodium excites the heart muscle. So without enough sodium, the heart can't pump. And so you don't get enough oxygen to the cells. You don't get enough nutrition. You're going to feel tired and weak. And just as a side note, when I talk about sodium, I'm really recommending sea salt because you wouldn't necessarily want to take sodium uh, as an individual mineral because sodium works with so many other things. So you want to get your sodium from sea salt. Now, sodium also regulates calcium, calcium homeostasis. So without sodium, calcium can't really work in the body. So then you don't get the contraction of the muscles, you don't get the rhythm of the heart, and you can't produce the energy that you need. Okay? So that relationship is very, very important. Also, sodium is involved in this really key pump in the cells that produce voltage because the cell is like a battery. So you need sodium for that pump. You also need potassium as well. And so if you're low in sodium, you're going to have low voltage okay, in the body. And here's another interesting thing about sodium. Sodium is very important. It's vital in making energy in the mitochondria. In your kidneys, you have the most concentrated mitochondria, okay? Simply because sodium is so important that the kidney has to maintain a very high level of energy to recycle sodium. And so this is just another reason why the body considers sodium as something that is very, very important. And last point, seawater. The chemistry of seawater is virtually identical to the watery portion of your blood. So when you consume more sea salt, you're fortifying your blood.